Welcome to Screen Recaps, and today we are going to recapping the movie in good company. Dan Foreman, 51, wakes up to prepare for his job at Globecom, only to learn the company has been taken over by a larger corporation. While processing the news, he finds a discarded pregnancy test at home, worrying about his daughters, before thinking of his wife. In New York, Dan meets with Mr. Cowell, who informs him that new management plans to cut ads from the magazine due to changing readership. To save the company, Dan pitches a sports magazine idea. Meanwhile, his colleague Carter shows a dinosaur-themed phone design to the board. Mike, another executive, announces a takeover of Waterman Publishing and hints that Carter is being groomed for a leadership role. Back at home, Dan finds the pregnancy test missing from the trash, increasing his anxiety about his daughters. He checks on Alex and tries to talk to her openly. Later, Dan expresses his concerns to his wife, Anne only for her to surprise him with the news that she's pregnant, though happy Dan is shocked due to their age difference. Meanwhile, story shifts to Carter, who is now married to Kimberly for seven months. Carter is excited about his promotion, but his wife Kimberly finds his job dull. At Globecom, Dan learns he'll be replaced by Carter as head of ad sales, despite his successful year. Frustrated, Dan struggles with the changes as his daughters prepare for college and a baby is on the way. Dan's daughter Alex visits his office and meets Carter, unaware of his promotion. Later, Alex shares her excitement about getting into NYU, but Dan worries about finances, though he reassures her they can manage. Carter, trying to celebrate his promotion, buys a Porsche, but ends up with a broken arm after a car accident. Carter returns home to his wife, Kimberly, only to find her packing to leave. Despite his apologies, Kimberly remains firm, revealing that she cheated on him and doesn't want children. She leaves, returning to her parents. Meanwhile, Dan accompanies his wife, Anne, to an ultrasound, hearing their baby's heartbeat. The stress from job loss and family responsibilities overwhelms Dan, nearly causing him a stroke, though he brushes it off when confiding in Anne. Carter, now living in his damaged Porsche, struggles at work, nervously pitching ideas to Globecom's staff. His lack of clarity and overuse of buzzwords leaves Dan unconvinced with employees betting against Dan's future. To smooth things over, Carter invites Dan to an expensive sushi dinner and reveals Globecom's financial cuts. Dan is outraged by the potential pay cuts for his team and storms out. However, Carter persuades him to stay by offering him a role as his wingman, leveraging Dan's sales expertise as an asset. Despite his reluctance, Dan considers the offer to keep his job. Enrique argues with Carter, leading to Enrique's firing so Dan can keep his job. Dan moves to a smaller office and becomes Carter's wingman during Sports America pitch meetings. Carter works long hours and deals with marital issues, even calling Dan for a Sunday business meeting, offering sushi to ease the tension. Mark warns Carter not to get personal, but Carter defends keeping Dan over Enrique. After work, Carter ends up inviting himself to Dan's home for dinner. At Dan's house, Carter meets Anne, when Carter spots a family photo, he recognizes Dan's daughter, Alex, who is surprised to see him there. Carter awkwardly explains his presence at Dan's house, feeling down after his wife Kimberly left. He bonds with Alex over a game of table football, while Anne, nauseous from pregnancy, gets upset when Dan drops the dinner she made. The group ends up ordering pizza. At dinner, Dan sternly warns Jonna's boyfriend over the phone and an awkward moment happens when Carter accidentally soils Dan's pants. Alex shows interest in Carter as he leaves. Later, Carter returns home lonely, while Dan helps Alex move into her NYU dorm, worried about her safety. He gives her pepper spray and installs surveillance. Dan says an emotional goodbye to Alex before she heads to NYU. Carter moves out of Dan's house and finalizes his divorce. Despite earlier tensions, Carter and Dan's relationship improves. Carter suggests using luxury suites for clients instead of Knicks games. They attend a concert but clash over humor. Dan faces a setback when Rum Jamaica drops out due to conflicts with European advertisers. Over drinks, Carter contemplates firing more employees. Dan, feeling the weight of his colleagues' futures, takes it upon himself to do the firings. He informs his colleagues with a heavy heart, receiving mixed reactions. Dan then evaluates himself poorly while giving the 360 evaluations to Carter. Meanwhile, Carter runs into Alex at a cafe. He joins her, grabbing coffee and noting Carter's lack of a wedding ring. Carter admits he's happy to be divorced. As they bond, a romance begins between Carter 
and college freshman Alex. Alex shares her positive experiences with creative writing but considers switching to a business major. She wonders if Carter, despite his success, is unhappy with his career. Carter reveals his parents are polar opposites, a hippie mother and a troubled father. Uncomfortable with the topic, Carter suggests moving on, but Alex isn't interested. They explore Chinatown, and after Alex kisses Carter, he hesitates, but eventually follows her to her dorm. There, he experiences a flashback, and Alex's directness makes him nervous. They continue to kiss, but Alex worries about surveillance cameras. The next morning, Carter acts jittery around Dan, who suspects drug use. Carter's new, dent-free Porsche contrasts with his anxious demeanor. Meanwhile, Dan is busy preparing for a new baby and trying to reach Alex. Carter and Dan face the tough task of letting go of more team members, causing the office to empty out as chairs are removed. Meanwhile, the sales team challenges other departments to a basketball game against the Globe Com Trotters. During the match, Mark, who has a past with Dan, jokingly suggests Dan and Carter seem like a couple. As Globecom continues to win, Mark's showboating irritates Dan, fueling his competitive spirit. Dan gets more intense, successfully blocking a shot but injuring himself while attempting a dunk, which forces the top sales player to leave the game. Dan's concern for Alex grows as she remains unreachable. Carter, who keeps a photo of Alex as his screensaver, is misinterpreted by Dan as having a new romantic interest, but Carter assumes Dan is referring to his fish. Dan, worried about Alex and his own marriage, playfully advises Carter to behave, which upsets him. At Dan's 52nd birthday party, Carter surprises him with a gift, and Dan humorously shows up in shorts, delighting the guests. However, Dan feels guilty about Morty's deteriorating mental health and his role as a house husband. In a private moment, Carter gives Alex a diamond necklace, which amazes her, and she kisses him in gratitude. Carter tells Alex he's happy with her as Dan opens gifts at the party. Dan notices Carter and Alex outside and follows them to a restaurant. There, he sees Alex wearing the necklace Carter gave her and, assuming an affair, confronts them. Dan's anger escalates when Alex admits she's involved with Carter. Dan punches Carter and threatens the waiter, then berates Carter for his behavior and the sacrifices he made for Alex. Dan leaves, and Alex chases him apologizing and explaining she's not ready for a commitment due to her studies. Carter accepts the breakup. Later, Dan rushes to the hospital where Anne is staying due to pregnancy complications. Alex, also at the hospital, assures Dan it wasn't his fault and apologizes for misleading him. Dan promises to work hard for Alex's future. Teddy Kay visits the office, notices Carter's black eye, and Carter lies about how he got it. Teddy Kay is about to deliver a significant announcement and Dan is unsure what it entails. During the speech, as Teddy discusses the future of technology and its impact on magazines, Dan has a revelation and interrupts, arguing that global changes should drive innovation rather than discard traditional elements. The audience is embarrassed by the interruption, but Dan stands firm. Teddy Kay, with a knowing smile, acknowledges Dan, but doesn't directly address his points. After the speech, Mark is furious and wants Dan fired. He is clearly impressed by Teddy Kay and his authority. Mark threatens Carter, saying if Dan is dismissed, Carter will also be let go. Carter remains unbothered, leading Mark to decide to fire both him and Dan. Carter initially bluffs but later meets with Mr. Cow, a longtime client. Dan takes the lead, uncovering that budget issues due to Mr. Cow's son-in-law are the main concern. Mr. Cow agrees to support their magazine. However, upon returning, they discover Teddy Kay has sold the company to Mr. Cow, and Mark announces the restructuring, resulting in both Mark and Carter being fired. While Dan is allowed to stay, Mark feels irreplaceable and sad about losing his job, but Dan leaves feeling sympathy for their situation. Dan sets up his redesigned office and Carter visits him, mentioning he's currently unemployed. Dan offers Carter a position as second in command, but Carter declines, feeling he's not ready for such a responsibility. He inquires about Dan's family, especially Alex, and Dan reassures him that they're well. They have a heartfelt conversation, apologize for past actions, and share a warm hug, mending their friendship. Alex surprises Dan by suggesting they play tennis together. At the hospital, Anne gives birth to a daughter, bringing joy to Dan's life. Dan calls Carter in Los Angeles to share the news and possibly rekindle their friendship. Morty gets his job back with a raise, 
though his wife is laid off. Carter reveals he's pursuing a new direction professionally. Alex continues working on her writing and says goodbye to Carter as she leaves in the elevator. I thought I was 